for a car lover, this is like Christmas morning. Uh, we are going to the Ultimate Car Lovers event on the Ultimate Car Lovers weekend, which is uh, Dawn Patrol at Pebble Beach. This car is a famous car. Yeah. 1955 300 SLR, uh, but not any SLR. It's 722. This is the car that went 1,000K in 10 hours with, uh, with Moss and Jenkins. This is the very car. Uh, inline eight cylinder motor, two frame chassis, inboard brakes. And if you take a look on the inside, it's really quite shocking how these sat, it's almost like riding a horse. If you take a look at this, it's all rather tiny. And uh, this guy had to sit on the left side of the vehicle and he was pumping this and, and basically pushing fuel forward to the engine. Chain drive too, you can imagine shifting this, you know, your arm is just slightly away from this chain that's moving at massive speed. Artillery wheels, uh, the wow, time wooden a wheels. Wooden spoke. Yep. It's a good example of an early Mercedes Grand Prix car. It's safe to say this was the, the most famous car in the world for a good length of time. It was the fastest thing in the world, really, you know. There was nothing faster than this, not an airplane. They said as fast as a bullet. Uh, car ran 141 miles an hour on the sand in Florida. Uh, absolutely record-breaking car. 200 horsepower, 21 and a half liters, four-cylinder. So when they say there's no substitute for cubic inches, this is where, this is it. where it started. This is absolutely it. Tommy, we're standing in front of an 1894 Benz Victoria. This is an unrestored car. I bought it from the first owner. That means I bought it three years ago. Uh, this family bought it directly from Carl Benz. It was a, it's a demonstrator car and kept it for 115 years. This is uh, the first four-wheeled car. You know, the first car that Carl Benz made was a three-wheeler and he invented this um, axle system which we still use today modernized of course but it's still the same system and so he invented a new ignition system that made it possible like on this car to have 400 to 600 revs which uh, will speed the car a funny detail we have the first ticket he got in 1800 speeding ticket, speeding ticket in 1895 he was punished with three marks to pay because of too high speed. You must understand and know that this car has a maximum speed of 23, 24 kilometers per hour. And to show that it is not true, the police said that in the restaurant nearby, the curtains were dangling because he was racing with such a speed. Yep. This really is kind of the, the change in the automotive age. We have here a uh, 1904 Simplex. The name Simplex came from a marketing campaign that they said it's so easy to drive, it's Simplex. It doesn't look totally Simplex to me. What, <laughs> what is this whole row? This, of, this of... is not a trumpet. This is an oiling system. And uh, you did not have a, a circulating oiling system at the time. And it was a, still a total loss system. So you had to monitor that. You have a little sight glass in here. So you had quite a lot going on still. <laughs> Uh, with all these cars that are buffed and waxed to within an inch of their life, this one stands out. And this is what you would call a heavy sense of patina on the car. And it's nice to see an original car. My understanding, this car is never has never been restored. So it is as it left the factory. Some people would say, well, why don't you restore it? And I personally feel something like that is wonderful. You have to leave it alone. Now, I see the three-pointed star, but with uh, with no... No circle. Well, the circle only came later. So uh, the trademark for Daimler and Mercedes was the star. Uh, for Benz, it was a laurel, kind of a laurel with the Benz logo in it. And later on, when the two companies merged, they merged those two elements into what we know as the three-pointed star today. It's, it's incredible. Look at the workmanship. I mean, I've never seen a wood encased a radiator, too. That's just an absolutely incredible. Wood structure in the car was used for many, many years, uh, even up to uh, post-war Mercedes, where the bodies were constructed of uh, wood and uh, with a metal skin on top. Incredible piece of art, really. So I, I think we're standing next to a car that you could arguably say is the most iconic of Mercedes-Benz cars, a 300 SL Gullwing. For this particular car is equipped with rudge wheels. These are the central knockoff wheels. Uh, that was an option back in the day. Today, if you have a car that was originally equipped with rudge wheels, it makes the car much more valuable. Like how much more valuable? About $70,000 more. And at the time, it was just a few hundred dollars uh, the option. 
Well, here on the line, you never know who you're going to run into, um, whether it's Sterling Moss or a guy that's quickly uh, etching his place in history with the little Mercedes history, Dario Franchitti, two-time Indy 500 champion, three-time series champion, Chase at number four. Uh, you gravitated towards this. Yeah, they're stunning. Um, I, I love the Gullwing, yeah. but the Roadster for me, you get the top down, you know, it's a better handling car. Um, it, it's just, it's, they, they are, they're a work of art. And Frank, tell us about this car a bit. It's a late 300 SL. Uh, this is chassis number 3254. It was completed on February 4th, 1963. It was built during the fi final week of production. They built five cars that week. Four were white with red leather. One was gray with black leather. This is mostly an original uh, car as mostly well. Mostly an original yeah. car. When I purchased it, it had been in storage from uh, 1967 until 1997. It had about 17,000 original miles on it, and I've added another 14,000. What, what's cool to note too is that as a as a company, we're really very good with the records. So Absolutely. The uh, the records tell quite a lot about the car, and they help also if people are restoring a car, they tell exactly how the car was built. I purchased a 300 SL many years ago as an alternative kind of investment to pay for my children's college education. Now that they're in college, I'm working harder than I've ever worked because I don't want to sell the car. <laughs>